The following is a recording of a workshop that my wife and I have every Saturday at our home in North Miami Beach. Uh, this Saturday, we discuss the Oponopono meditation and how it can be applied to relieve stress and to heal relationships. Hi, Lewis. Does it make sense that in relationship dynamics, there's kind of like energy that's being transferred back and forth between people, right? So you're, you're feeling a certain way about let's say your husband and he's feeling a certain way about you and you're kind of like it's kind of like communication channels going back and forth i'm recording this um we don't need to use names okay <laughs> are you comfortable with that that's fine yeah okay. yeah we record some of our sessions you know just like for our social media or you know we share with clients also that you know ask us when they can't they can't uh, be part of the session and they say you know can we participate offline or you know, uh, or sometimes online, but today we don't have anyone who's online live. So with this silent communication, so there's communication through words, and then there's the silent communication of energy. So sometimes in relationships, we may feel a certain way about what someone is saying, doing, feeling. And when we do, we may send energy back to the person based on what it is that, you know, we're sensing their feeling, doing or saying or thinking. And so when we become more aware of the kind of communication that's going on between us, we can choose to release the parts of this communication, this energetic communication that's not helpful. So for instance, judgment is not helpful. Having expectation is not helpful. Uh, you know, being critical, wanting to punish, you know, none of these, or wanting to control is not helpful. Of course, parts of us do it. And there's a reason why parts of us do it. A part of us may feel threatened by the behavior, may feel unsafe with the behavior, may feel, you know, like uh, uh, unloved, not accepted, you know, a bunch of different ways in which we can interpret the other person's thoughts, emotions, behavior, and then react to it. So the Oponopono mantra is a way to kind of heal that communication channel so that all that is sent is love, forgiveness, and, and gratitude. So when you're in a state of love, <coughs> unconditional love, acceptance, forgiveness, and gratitude, it's very different than when you're in the reactive mode of, of saying what you're doing is not okay with me. Not that you want to, to do that, but it's just a reaction. It's kind of like the fight or flight. Yeah. If a behavior or, or a thought or a word or an emotion is, you know, is um, uh, interpreted as, as either pain producing or potentially threatening, we're going to react to that. Well, we can change that. And the Oponopono mantra is, is geared towards doing that. It doesn't only work like between people, it's also with yourself. So there could be parts of yourself that you don't like. There could be parts of yourself that you know that you judge or that you don't feel comfortable with or that you don't accept or things in your life or things in the future that you might see unfolding or things in the past so it also works for that so it's not just like between people it's also within yourself it can be used in general like in general meaning like um you can focus on the person in general without focusing on a specific thing that triggers you and same thing it can be used for yourself without focusing on specific thing that triggers you so it's very um, uh, flexible it's used and then it can be used very uh, like almost like a laser focusing on something very specific so let's say choose something that that really triggers you if you're if it's okay with you to share um feeling like someone doesn't care about me feeling okay. ignored okay so does it make sense that if we have the interpretation of someone's behavior as meaning that they don't care about us it's going to trigger us yeah we're going to react to that we're mm -hmm. going to feel unsafe with that we're going to feel victimized by that mm -hmm. well when when we react in this way it it kind of like um 
diminishes our quality of consciousness and our capacity to actually understand the behavior of the other person. Mm -hmm. So the other person is not there thinking, oh, I don't care. <laughs> They're there, you know, whatever it is that's happening in their process that's creating this supposed lack of care, right? That's not really what's going on with them. What's going on is they could be distracted. Mm -hmm. They could be themselves, you know, in pain, anxious. They could be, you know, they're preoccupied by something else and therefore not have the bandwidth or the capacity <clears throat> to be present in the relationship. So when you use the Oponopono mantra on that, for instance, like saying, well, they don't care. Mm -hmm. You can come to a point where you can love the parts of them that supposedly don't care, where you can forgive it, where you can feel grateful for it, meaning like, you know, and I'm not saying that that happens, you know, like right away, but over time, you can actually understand it. And then when that happens, you gain the capacity to be in a place where you become conscious enough that you can navigate the situation more optimally. Because now you're not reacting to your own projections, you're actually understanding what's going on with the pro with the person sending them love sending them healing energy sending them you know like forgiveness forgiving them and that creates a shift in the dynamics because if the person is already in a behavior where they're reacting to something internally within themselves where they don't probably they don't feel safe themselves they don't feel, there's something going on that's creating this um incapacity to see in another their the need of, of someone else. Mm -hmm. Well, if now they receive energy that's saying that's wrong, that's bad, you know, shouldn't be acting like that, guess what happens for them if they're receiving that kind of feedback from their actions? They shut down. Yeah. So they're going to feel unsafe too. They're going to feel even more unsafe. So let's say that they were already triggered mm -hmm. and as a result, they, they were not very conscious about, you know, the people around them and therefore, you know, were not as affectionate or caring. And now they're being sent energy that says this is wrong, this is bad, you know, you, what you're doing is not okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue that dynamic. So the Oponopono mantra uh, shifts that. And now what you're sending is you're sending love, you're sending forgiveness, you're sending, you're holding the space of consciousness where this person can be exactly as they are and you're okay with that. So I'm not saying that you're going to be able to do that every time and that it's going to be easy because the parts of you that were reacting to, for instance, not, for instance, imagining that you were not cared for, mm -hmm. that part feels unsafe. Yeah. And so it can take some time. There could be some resistance. That said, the Oponopono mantra is very powerful in, in starting the process of healing and shifting the dynamics. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we've, we've noticed when we tell our clients to use Oponopono is that in, we're on the call with, with a client and they use the Oponopono mantra. And the next thing you know, the person that they're doing it with is texting them or trying to call them. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's really, it's, it's, I mean, for me, in my life, I've used it and I've had this immediate, like, effect where I've used the Oponopono mantra, forgiven someone and sent them love. And as a result, there's like, it clears the energy and wow. then it, it, it shifts the dynamics of the relationship. Of course, to sustain it, you need to continue, meaning that, you know, if you just do it for that moment and then you go back into judgment, and, and punishment mode, well, the dynamics go back to where they were. That said, in that moment, doing that process shifts the energy and gives you the opportunity to clean the slate mm -hmm. and to start new again. And then to dig into, okay, well, we have these things going on. Let's understand why they're going on and then we can clear them. And that's, that's kind of like the Oponopono mantra is like a tool to get there, to get to then explore more deeply why the things are happening. You're kind of like cleaning things up so that then you have space, right? Because if you're in an argument, if you're, you know, punishing, if you're judging, if you're hypercritical, that doesn't give much space for consciousness, for you to actually look at what's going on because you're in reactive mode. Yeah. Did you have anything else to add, baby? Um, the only thing I would add to that is that if you look at your relationships as almost metaphysically speaking, 
your connection to everything in your life, to every idea, to every memory, to every person, to, to every future imagining about your life. When your relationships to every object that you might consider, that your brain might process information about, to every person, when you start to, to shift those relationships into one of, of, of love, of gratitude, of appreciation, which is what the Ho'oponopono does, you, you end up relating to everything in your life in a new way, in a loving way. And just doing that, right, if we remove the amazing results that it can have in the way other people treat us, if we just even remove that, it's still so special. Because if we have a, a partner who come, comes home grumpy on a regular basis, and you know sometimes they'll be really kind and affectionate, maybe they're usually too stressed out to, to be that way often. So if every time they come home grumpy, we can receive them with love and compassion and not get sucked into that grumpiness and not, to, not feel like their mood is a reflection of them not caring about us or not loving us and things like that, then not only can we maintain our internal state when they're, doing, when they're going through their process of evolution, um, we can also appreciate so much more when, when they are loving and kind and everything in between. And then when you apply that to, <laughs> I mean, you can apply that to the, your partner and you can apply it to your bed, to your car, to, to your job, to people at work, to your family, to, to yourself, to so many things. So the process of, of becoming empowered in the way you relate to things via relationship, via the oponopono is really, can be really powerful. Yeah, it shifts your entire perspective of yourself, of others, of relationships, of life. So it's, it's, we, we find it to be extremely powerful and useful. So um, the Oponopono mantra is used, you know, in different ways, in different communities. So some people are aware that it exists and are using it. It's not always used um, as powerfully as it could because there's an order in the emotional state that it creates that is best to use it in it. And so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, how it's being used and how we use it, which is a little bit different. So the Oponopono mantra starts with this. You start by saying, I love you. And then you say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And then thank you. A lot of people are using that, saying those four things, you know, over and over and over again. From our personal experience and what we've learned and what we've seen of how it works, we found that actually using it in phases is better. So starting with I love you until there's a shift in energy, meaning that you feel, you know, a, a different internally. There's less tension, less resistance, less reactivity to what you're trying to forgive and then shifting into I'm sorry. Then holding that space of consciousness with the I'm sorry. And then again, until you find again, like there's a shift in your internal, you know, emotional uh, dynamics. And then using the next step and then the next step. As opposed to just mentally repeating the words over and over. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. A lot of the times that's how it's been taught. It's, and... There's a separation between the emotion, the feelings of I love you and I'm sorry. And then the actual repetition of it. Because we can go into any sort of emotion and just say, I love you, sorry, please scream me, thank you, I love you, sorry. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? yeah, it's not the true. same. Yeah. <laughs> and so we found that the phases actually gets people in touch more with their emotions. and Which is where the real work gets done. Yeah. yeah. So for you to get to a point where you can forgive, there needs to be enough love. You know what I mean? Yeah. The foundation of love needs to be there. And then you get to the next stage and then the next stage. So we found that this, it's, it's much more effective like that. And it's less like, a, you know how sometimes people go to church, but it's not really, they don't feel it. You know, yeah. they're just going because they're going through the motion. Yeah. Well, in the same way, if you're doing a mantra, but you're just going through the motion, you know, it's not really going to ch shift your inner state of beingness. So the, the, the point is really to get into the feelings to get into the emotions and allow mm -hmm. yourself to, to, to feel the shifts that are going on inside of you so that you can achieve the state that you want to achieve, right? yeah. which is the state of inner peace, happiness, joy, connection, love. 
and or whatever else. The only thing I'll add to that is, have you ever seen someone get upset at someone who wasn't intending to be rude or mean to them at all, who was actually being very kind to them, and then but the other person simply misinterpreted where they were coming from? Yeah, yeah. A lot of our relationships, a great, great majority of our relationships are really personally defined. Meaning that if it's, it's the projections, the fears, the expectations, the beliefs, the judgments that we're bringing to the table that are inside of us that are determining the way that we see that person, the way we see that relationship, and the way we interpret them to be behaving. If we didn't have those, whenever someone actually was rude to us, we would see their inner child. We would see that they're in pain. We would see that they're afraid. We would see that they're doing their best, that they don't know better. And so we don't really need anyone to change to improve our relationship to others. Because our relationship to others is exactly that. It's how we choose to relate to them. And in that, there's a lot of potential to explore. And this mantra allows you to harness that potential. So um, you can, again, you can choose to do that with yourself in general, healing your, you know, like your relationship to yourself, someone else in general, or again, like for instance, specifically some, like they don't care. You can send love and, and forgiveness to that. And, if, and if, you, if you focused on that feeling yeah. that you feel when you said those words, if you felt some tension somewhere, some pain somewhere, you could do the oponopono and send that energy towards that and heal it. Yeah, or towards the other person and how you feel about mm -hmm. them not caring. So it's up to you. We're not going to, you don't have to tell us. Just when, when we're doing it, you'll just be focusing on whatever it is that you chose to apply the oponopono mantra to. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. I'll just put some music and... So you said it's I love you... Oh, I'll be saying it. Oh, okay. So yeah, okay. it's it's we're gonna start with I love you, and then we're gonna say I'm sorry, please forgive me, and then thank you. Okay. Should we choose now what we're gonna do it for or towards? Individually. Yes. Yes. Okay. Are you okay with music? Mm -hmm. okay. So when you're ready, you can close your eyes. If you're okay with that. And take a moment to just feel how you feel in your body right now. You can adjust your body, move around throughout the entire time. Whenever you need to move, whenever you feel uncomfortable, the most important thing is to be comfortable, to be relaxed. We're not trying to force relaxation physically, mentally, or emotionally. We're choosing to relax. We're intending to relax. Becoming aware of any tension, physical, mental, in the form of thoughts, emotional, and choosing to let go. Inhaling through your nose, exhaling out of your mouth, letting go. Creating space in your body through the breath. 
slowly, gently deepening the breath, lengthening it. Feeling the body expanding as you relax. Still noticing if you find that there's areas of tension and choosing, intending to relax, to bring the breath in those areas, to create space. Feeling yourself inside your body comfortable. Relax. Noticing the sounds around you. And then coming inwards, letting go of what's going on around you, not suppressing it, just choosing to focus internally. While continuing to intend to relax, to create space in your body, to let go of the thoughts and emotions that come up. Bring up something that is triggering to you, whether it's something internal to yourself, something in somebody else. It can be general or specific, whatever it is, allow yourself to feel it, to focus on it while relaxing. You may feel tension, you may hear specific thoughts. You may feel emotions, maybe resentment, anger, sadness. Whatever comes up, allow it to come up. And begin to intentionally, from your heart, say, I love you. Sending love from your heart, repeating mentally to yourself towards that which you're wanting to heal. I love you. Continue repeating, I love you, with intention, with the intention of healing that which you have either resentment, sadness, anger towards. Staying into the space of your heart as you continue to repeat, I love you. Observing the shifts in your physical body as you say, I love you. Observing the shifts in your mental state, in your emotional state as you continue to repeat, I love you. As you continue to repeat, I love you, focusing on that which you had judgment of before. See how you feel. Notice if you've become more relaxed, 
more peaceful, less triggered. Continuing to direct your energy towards love, acceptance. Repeating the statement, I love you. Once you feel a shift in your inner state, and if you haven't yet felt this shift, you can continue to repeat, I love you, until you feel this shift and then start repeating, I'm sorry. Getting in touch with this part, whether it's a part of you or a part of somebody else that has felt pain and that has reacted to this pain with thoughts, words, behaviors, emotions that have brought more pain and telling this part of yourself or somebody else, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your pain. Continue focusing on this part of yourself or of somebody else that you have felt ju judgment towards before and saying, I'm sorry. Offering understanding. I'm sorry. Continue focusing on the part while you repeat intentionally, I'm sorry. Observing how your body reacts, any thoughts, any emotions that come up as you continue to say, I'm sorry. Intending to relax your body, letting go of any thoughts and emotions that come up and not clinging, just observing as you continue to direct your energy and repeat, I'm sorry. you continue to observe, continue intentionally to repeat I'm sorry to this part of yourself or the part of another, become aware of any shifts that have taken place in your physical, mental and emotional state. Maybe you're more relaxed, more quiet, more open. Just observe until you feel a second shift where you feel more relaxed, open, quiet, less triggered. And now begin while focusing on the part that you're wanting to heal to say, please forgive me. Ask 
asking for forgiveness from this court for any judgment, any punishment. ways in which you may have rejected that part, not accepted that part, offering forgiveness, please forgive me. Noticing how you feel as you offer forgiveness to this part of yourself or the part of another that's in pain, has been reacting to their pain, creating more pain and hurt, and asking for forgiveness. Please forgive me. yourself to relax, letting go of the thoughts and emotions that are not serving you, repeating please forgive me, relaxing into the present moment, allowing for the shifts in your emotions to take place. As you continue to repeat, please forgive me. Until you feel that this part of yourself or this part of another person has forgiven you, has accepted your love, your acceptance, your forgiveness, your apologies, your understanding. Feel that shift. You feel more relaxed with less thoughts, less negative emotion, just peaceful. At peace with this part of yourself or the part of another person. Non reactive to it. Accepting, loving, and forgiving of it. You can begin to say thank you, offering your gratitude for this healing. Offering gratitude for finding your inner peace, no matter what a part of yourself or a part of another might be doing, allowing yourself to clear the pain, to clear any past painful memories, and feeling grateful for that experience, saying thank you. how your heart opens when you shift into a state of gratitude, how relaxed you can become, how quiet, peaceful. Focusing on all the things that you're grateful for, including this healing.
feel that you are accepting, unconditionally loving, forgiving of this part that you used to feel triggered by, that you used to react to. You can slowly come back. Deepen your breath. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. How do you feel? Good. Yes? Good. Did you like it? I did. Yes? Yeah. Do you have any that you want to share or any questions about it um i thought it was really good i'm going to use it to i'm going to go through different people mm -hmm. in my family <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it was helpful it can very uh it can help a lot dexter mentioned it to visualize them as a child so to see their inner child i did that with my i did my husband and i saw him at one point as like a little boy yeah. in the beginning mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. yeah, it's very helpful <laughs> because if you see, which it is, like any part of ourselves that's not conscious, that's not acting out of love, it's a child part. Feels it's vulnerable. It's a part, yeah. Powerless, powerless. Out of control. <laughs> yeah. Our therapist always says, are you guys acting out of your lower self or your higher self? And it takes me a few days. Sometimes I'll be like, oh man, I wasn't acting out of my highest <laughs> So he meditates a lot. And he'll, he always says that. He's like, I don't know if you're acting out of your highest, <laughs> best. <laughs> I'm always be like, oh, screw you, buddy. You know? <laughs> like, no, <he's> like, <laughs> well, but that's so. interesting, lower and higher, because the what usually gets engaged when we get into relationship conflict is the root chakra. Are you familiar with the chakras? Somewhat. Somewhat? Yeah. So basically, the lower ones are simpler, uh, more basic, more fight or flight oriented, well, the root chakra is, and then as you go up, they get more sophisticated and have more capacity to, to love and to, to be understanding and conscious. Okay. So that would be your lower self, your root yeah. chakra and the Amazing. lower chakras that are more kind of uh, focused on survival, <laughs> which can be pro projected psychologically. So survival is not just, okay, you know, like I'm going to get run over by this car sometimes in a relationship it can feel the same way like someone can say something and we react as if we were about to get run over by a car yeah. that's how intense it is because psychologically we project that feeling of not being unsafe onto you know something that's happening in our relationships or so the higher self is more it, it has more capacity to know that you're safe, right? Your higher self, first of all, if you're in touch with your soul, you know that you can't die because you're a soul. Yeah. So, so a body is just a body. It's, you're inhabiting your body and, you know, it, it, only the body can die, but you can't die. And so when you really get in touch with that, then what is, it, what is there to fear? Yeah. Right. We don't we don't get as triggered and and as reactive to what other people might say yeah. or what we might perceive as unsafe because we understand we're more um, we have a greater perspective on things. Like almost as if you're on the mountaintop. Yeah. Which is why we call that book navigating life from the mountaintop. <laughs> it's about being in your higher self. And there's one more thing I want to say. When you're in your higher self and you're not afraid then there's no reason not to be loving to people. There's no reason not to help people that, in, that we're in relationships with. There's no um, part of us that's trying to like control or avoid understanding certain things. Uh, when we're in fear, we can block out information because we get into fear, we get into a control straight automatically because as soon as we feel fear, we try to control our way into safety. Yeah. And in that process, we, we hide information from ourselves to make sure we can affect our control strategies. And that's why people, when they're in relationship conflict, that's why it's sometimes it's like so, like it's like they're living in another reality. And, and we're not, like, the communication's not happening. And, and, and that can kind of spiral into, like, until 
people will get really upset with each other, yell at each other, and then you know over time they're able to to forgive and, and get back together, and then they go through the cycle and the cycle. As we navigate from our higher selves more, we can sh shorten the cycle and reduce how often they happen. And over time, I mean, that can make or break a relationship. 